Yeah, this is extra exciting. Version 5 is finally here. In this video, I'll be going over the essentials. Aspect ratios, the parameters you need to know about, and some prompt comparisons between version 4 and version 5. Let's start with aspect ratios, and I want to show you a prompt that was sent to me by someone in the audience. Thank you to Tetsuo Kid for this suggestion. They told me about abstract fantasy, insert your subject here, neon watercolors, maximum textures. I thought this would be perfect to try in version 5. I chose a Native American mecha lord as my subject. What do you think? I'm pleasantly surprised with number one. I think it's beautiful. I'll go through the different aspect ratios now, but let this be the first time I mention how prompting is going to be different in version 5. Simple prompts are not going to cut it, and I think you're going to want to bump up the stylized value a little. Maybe add a dash of chaos as well. Here's the prompt in a square one by one. I think it looks all right. I like number four. And here's the truth about new aspect ratios. You can include any ratio you want. It's no longer constrained to two by one or one by two. You can pick any number as long as it has a double colon in between. It's going to take a lot of testing to figure out which aspect ratios work the best, but I've got some interesting findings to show you right now. Here it is in two by one. So this is twice the width to the height. I think they're beautiful. This might get a little difficult to show on YouTube. Here's three by one. So the width of these images are three times as long as the height of them. That's pretty crazy. And we've been warned they're not guaranteeing any high quality stuff coming out of these crazier canvas sizes. So you might want to stick to the normal. You know what I mean? Like here's five by one and you can already notice the most interesting thing. Instead of spreading one subject over such a weird dimension, it sort of cuts up the canvas in a different frames. I think that's so interesting. Oh, you want one really wide photo? Well, here's a bunch of little photos. Like that's hilarious mid journey right there. Here's four by one. I wanted to see where mid journey started that trend. I think it handles three images really well. Here is 16 to one. I know you can barely see it on your screen right now. I don't think there's really anything I can do to show it to you. I wouldn't recommend making these really wide photos, but maybe you can think of a good application for it. Let me know in the comments below. Here's one by five. And again, you can't really tell what's going on. Maybe this would be fun to make like custom bookmarks with. Like that's the idea I get from it. But let me know if there's anything you think you could apply this to. And here's one by two for the record. This is a little more normal, something you could get in the past. Again, I think it does a pretty good job. However, I'm not satisfied with this base prompt, at least in version five. So what can we do with it? Some of the other parameters that we're gonna have to experiment with are stylize and chaos. Stylize can be written as dash dash stylize and then a number between zero and a thousand, but I recommend shortening it to dash dash s and then your number. Chaos can be written as dash dash chaos zero to 100, but again, I suggest writing dash dash c and then a number. And what the stylized value controls is the creativity of mid journey. The lower the number, the more mid journey will try to stick to what you wrote. Whereas a higher stylized value, mid journey will start to inject its own creativity and it will stray away from your prompt. So here is stylized zero. And what do you think? I'm. I think they're beautiful. I love number one and I love number four. And here is stylized 1000 on the complete opposite end of creativity where mid journey has just splattered paint on this canvas. I actually really like number one. I think that's gorgeous. Hey, maybe this is a fun time to show you the new upscaler. Check this out. All we're going to do is hit U1. and it's made instantly. Now what's happening is that there isn't a new upscale. When you hit the upscale button, it's just going to feed you the picture you chose because the original generation is already at this resolution. In the future, they will add a new upscaler, but for now, your original generation is just going to be at a higher resolution. And this might be good because now you're going to get exactly what you see in the thumbnail. Whereas in version four and previous versions, there was always a little difference between what you thought you were getting and what you got. Okay, we're not done with the parameters. Here's Chaos 50 mixed with Stylize 500. Number one is great but I think this much chaos might be a little too much and this much stylized might be a little too much. I'll show you examples in a bit, but I think the sweet spot is chaos 25 
stylized 300. Just to point out, here's Chaos 100, stylized 1000. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention this. What the Chaos value does is determines how much variety is in your initial generation. With Chaos naturally set to zero, the four pictures you get are going to look pretty similar to each other because they come from the same seed. Now, when you inject Chaos into your prompt, the pictures still come from the same seed, but they come from different parts of the seed. And you're gonna get four distinctly different pictures to choose from. Like here, what would you choose? Uh, the Beetleborg bounty hunter, the oil painting, the watercolor, or this glow-in-the-dark person? It's pretty interesting, and for now, in version 5, I don't recommend using the maximum values, but I don't recommend not using them at all. You're probably going to want what these parameters bring to the pictures. Okay, here's a fun thing to show you. Can version 5 generate text? Kind of? Here is the word love written on a poster. As you can see, kind of in one, not really, nothing in two. It is there in three, and it's kind of there in number four. And I would say this is probably way better than version four. However, I used a very short word, love. Midjourney was always kind of okay at handling short words. Although, look at these. I have love written on a scrapbook, and I've seen this technique used before, but you just repeat what you want a bunch of times in the prompt. I think number two is great. I think if we hit variations on number three, we would get something pretty quickly that says love. I guess we can try that. So I think this did a pretty good job, a better job than version four. But I gotta show you, it can't handle longer words or multiple words. I tried to get a logo that says future tech pilot. No, these might as well be from version four. It's just gibberish. I tried the repeat technique, didn't do anything. So if anything, yes, it can handle text a bit better and you'll will probably be okay at generating short words, but can it generate text now? No, it can't. Okay, some more parameters to go through. Version 5 is not compatible with same seed, so this means you can't have a generation where each of the four images look identical. You couldn't do it in version 4 either, this was just a version 3 thing. But it had its uses, so I'd like to see this come back. Speaking of seeds, that's a pretty important parameter. Let's see what we can do with it. I use the prompt, a lonely night on the dock of the galaxy, seed 1212. And my goal was to use the same prompt and the same seed and then add different styles to see what it did to the generation. So here it is regularly, and here it is with cell shading. I don't know if you noticed, but they're completely different designs. Here it is as a watercolor painting. Again, locking the seed doesn't really do what you think it'll do. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information, but I want you to take away this. Locking in the seed number doesn't really matter, because if you change your prompt ever so slightly, you'll get a new batch of images. Let me make one point about this watercolor painting, and then I'll explain how seeds work just a little more. So I asked for a watercolor painting in my prompt, and it gave me these zoomed out photos of someone who's made a watercolor painting. Now while I personally love when Midjourney does this, I think it's hilarious. That is not necessarily what I wanted, and I know that's not what a lot of people want. So what can we do? We can use another parameter called no, dash dash no. This is called negative prompting, and one of the most powerful negative prompts you can use is dash dash no mock-up. Look what it does. It got rid of all that extra stuff. It's no longer a meta fourth wall breaking kind of image. It's now our prompt in the style we asked for. So remember, negative prompting can take away some of the funny quirks that Midjourney will give you. Okay, rewind back to the seeds. One last quick lesson. Like I said before, changing your prompt just a little will give you a whole new 4 billion seeds to choose from. However, in previous versions, you could use what is called multi-prompting to keep the first part of the prompt locked into a certain seed, and then afterwards you could adjust some of the details. Multi-prompting is when you split your prompt up with double colons instead of commas. A lonely night on the dock of the galaxy, colon colon cell shading, seed 1212. A lonely night on the dock of the galaxy, colon colon stained glass, same seed. Now when you react to one of your images with with the envelope emoji. You can also right click and find it there. Mid journey will send you a message with some information and your seed number. Like here, you see? Seed 1212 with the prompt a lonely night on the dock of the galaxy. Now, even though I wrote cell shading after this, because I used multi prompting, mid journey doesn't see the rest of the prompt. And in previous versions, like I said, you could have this prompt and then anything after the colons you could adjust. Now that doesn't work. Here's the same prompt, same seed, different set of pictures. 
because here I included stained glass after the colons. I know that's a lot to take in. My point is don't worry about what seed you're using because I don't think you're going to be able to replicate what you want to replicate, either normally or with multi-prompting. Just have fun with the randomness of mid-journey. Oh, here's a quick update on that scrapbook picture we tried earlier. I thought that hitting variations would get me a lot closer to the word I was looking for, and sure enough, there it is, love. And that's a major tip for you guys. If your picture is just slightly off, hit variations. Mid journey will try to course correct and you just have to guide it where you want to go. This is going to be a really long video. I'm sorry. I'm going to come up with a part two later that goes over a bunch of different prompts. But for now, let's do some prompt comparisons between V4 and V5. Here's a futuristic sports car version four. Looks pretty great to me. Version four was sick at a lot of things, but we're going to see where version five might be improved. And I'll tell you, it doesn't really seem to improve off the start. Now, one of the things you have to know about version 5 is that the algorithm is a lot less opinionated than version 4. You could write nonsense, very short prompts, and Midjourney would make something beautiful for you. That's not necessarily the case anymore. Version 5 might require longer prompts from you, or at least the chaos and stylized values. For the record, here's what a futuristic sports car looked like in version 3. We've come a long way in less than a year. Let's stick with the sports cars for a bit and stay in version 5 while playing with some of the other parameters. Here's futuristic sports car, stylized 500. As you can see, this is way better than the default. Adds in a lot more creativity and beauty to the generations. Number three is sick. Number two, nah, oh, they're all, those are unreal. And on the complete opposite end, here they are with stylized zero. When you're writing short prompts, I do not recommend a low stylized value. Go high. When you have long prompts, I don't know if I recommend high stylized values. I would say go low. Short prompts, stylized 1000, as high as you can go. Look at number two. That's crazy. And here's a good example of what just one extra word can do. Futuristic sports car, Unsplash. If you're unfamiliar with Unsplash, it's gonna bring in the most cinematic flair to any generation. And it sure did. I'm a big fan of number two and number four. That's crazy. Here's Unsplash, cinematic photo in the Mediterranean. Stylized 400. You see what version five can do? Some pretty powerful stuff these are gorgeous here's the same thing but with no stylized value specified and i don't think they're as good this is where i'm starting to realize how much the stylized value means to me in my version 5 exploration stylized 1000 i love them number two is unreal number four it's in the ocean like that's kind of funny and here is the example of my favorite prompt combo right now it's stylized 400 or 300 with Chaos 25, S400, C25. Just that dash of chaos. Look what it brings, man. These are hilarious. Not only are they slightly stranger, they're different from each other. You're never bored by a generation. You're getting four different things. I love number one, and that is so cool. Another prompt comparison for you. Here's Neon Batman in version four. This is definitely V4. Number one looks amazing. I'm really happy with that. Honestly, nothing wrong with version four. And here's what the same prompt looks like in V5. These are not good right now, but we're gonna add some style and some chaos. Here's Neon Batman, S300. Already starting to look super sick way better than the default i like number two i like number three a lot here's s1000 better than i thought they would be i like number two a lot it, you know what number one's growing on me as well s600 certainly had its own ideas but look at these guy s300 c25 i gotta tell you it's not this there's no way i would have thought of any of these these are so sick i freaking love number one i think that is so gorgeous and number four is hilarious look how clean these lines are i don't know how you would get that without randomly asking for a little bit of chaos oh look at these neon batman cell shaded style s300 number one man is that going in the thumbnail i i think so i think that's so good okay wait there's two more parameters i want to go over the first thing i want to show you is that the stop parameter works here's the prompt cherry blossom tree in the rain unsplash puddle in the foreground stop 40. 
here's your full images. They are blurry because you told it to stop at 40%. Again, I don't know why you'd want this, but you can do it. For the record, here's stop 80. I think 80 is okay. They're not really blurry anymore. And historically, the last 20% of a generation might add some things you're not interested in, but that's like a really personal preference kind of thing. And then we have the quality parameter. You can put dash dash Q and then any number between 0.25 and 5. Now this is going to do a couple things. One, it's going to determine how much detail goes into the generation. And number two, it's going to determine how long it takes to generate. The lower the quality, the faster and cheaper, but less good, where the higher quality will be pretty amazing, but take longer and cost more of your hours. Now here's one thing I'm not quite clear on. Previously, if you used a lower quality, it wouldn't matter because when you went to upscale it, it would fill in all the quality for you. But now, since there is no upscaler, I would recommend not using a lower quality in your prompts. Let me show you. Here's quality 2, and it looks like a normal generation. Here's quality 0.25. I don't think these are very good, and I'm pretty sure that came from this parameter. Whereas if you did this in the old model, what you saw here would just be a slightly less detailed version of a good picture. And then the rest of the quality, like I said, would be brought in with the upscaler and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Now I think there's a big difference. And here's quality five. Again, I don't think you can tell the difference between this and two and the default, but the lower quality, so I'm suggesting maybe ignore the quality parameter for now. I don't think you need to worry about it. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next one, I'll cover tiling, I'll cover landscapes, I'll cover portraits, sticker art, a bunch of other things, different styles, remixing. Get out of here. Go have fun with version five. Peace.